Sports Center. Brought to you by ESPN Full Court. Bringing you maximum college basketball. The bowl championship series, like health insurance coverage or education funding bills, you know there's a problem when people spend more time talking about who gets left out by the system than who gets included in it. There can only be two teams in the BCS title game. USC, Oklahoma have been on an Orange Bowl collision course since spring practice. Trojan Sooners, one and two in the polls all season long. It's a dream matchup for the national championship. What makes the BCS a nightmare? with the unplanned dream seasons by Auburn and Utah. Final BCS standings, as expected, USC, OU, go to the Orange Bowl to play for number one. Auburn, who carved through the SEC with a perfect 12-0 mark, the unlucky team at number three. Orange crushed and nothing they can do about it, really. Also feeling jilted, the Cal Golden Bears and the Pac-10, who lose their at-large berth by falling to fifth after a so-so showing against Southern Miss yesterday and effective politicking by Texas coach Mac Brown. The Horns finish fourth. Utah earning the other at-large berth automatically by finishing six. So the BCS matchups look like this. Trojans and Sooners, a Miami date on January 4th. Auburn meets ACC champ Virginia Tech in the Sugar Bowl. Utah, the first school from a non-BCS conference to break into the system. They'll play Pitt in the Fiesta Bowl. Wolverines, Longhorns, and the granddaddy of them all. UT sneaks into Pasadena by sneaking by Cal in the standings. Reese Davis, his fellow college football expert, makes sense of all of this. R.D.? Well, now, John, that's a pretty tall order you gave us to try to make sense of all of it. We'll try to explain it as best we can. And, you know, guys, I think what has happened the last few years when the BCS hasn't had the consensus one versus two for the national championship game is the fact that, that you have SC not playing for the title. But this year, both the computers and the polls agree. USC, Oklahoma, one, two, yet Auburn's on the outside looking in. What do you think so of you the like system? It? No, I'm asking you, what do you think? Did it well, work? Well, I know all of my colleagues to my left here are going to agree with me. It's clear that it's a colossal <laughs> failure here, the BCS, four of seven years. The system just frankly hasn't worked. You have five teams this year that are undefeated five teams and we're still arbitrarily deciding who ought to be the national champion. The fact that a team could go through the Southeast Eastern Conference, go 12-0, and and not have a chance to play for the national championship mark is fundamentally wrong. That's not sport. It needs to be decided on the field. There's too much at stake. My friend, Kirk and I were fortunate to see every BCS team right now live and in color except Texas. Now, throughout the football season, I thought Auburn was the second best football team I'd seen. But after them watching them live and in color against Tennessee, I changed my mind. I felt that Auburn was not the second best team, so the BCS worked. Number one, USC. Number two, Oklahoma. Mark, those two teams play. They are the two best football teams I saw during the whole season with my own eyes. It's the best system we have for right now. That's what I think. I totally agree with the coach. It is the best system that we have at this time. Obviously, I would like to see them be proactive rather than reactive when they tweak it every single season. But for what we have today, we've got number one and number two playing each other. Throughout the season, they were ranked there. They played that way the entire season long. They weren't perfect the entire season, but this is the system we have. Number one is USC. Number two is Oklahoma. It's unfortunate for Auburn. I hate to be Tommy Tupperville and tell his young players that, guys, you've done everything we asked you to. You've gone undefeated, but you can't play for the national championship. I'll give you a tweak. I, and I, I I've said this all year, the plus one, and I know there are different ways to go around it, but if you have the plus one, at least you give everybody a chance that's fighting in the top three or four a chance to win it on the field. One thing I want to say is you feel bad for Auburn, which is obvious, but also with what happened with USC and UCLA, Auburn hit the showers at halftime up 21 to 7 on Tennessee. They were dominating Tennessee. My friend wouldn't have changed his mind if they would have gone into the second half and won 21 to 7 in the second half. If they would have won by 30 or 40 points, there's a chance. I'm not saying it would have happened. There's a chance they could have moved up to number two in the AP. And at least at that point, it would have given them an opportunity to head to the bowl games, maybe on the outside of the BCS. Still going to the Sugar Bowl, but number two in the AP poll, and at that point still kind of having an opportunity to get in there to have a share of the national championship. Yeah. So as much as we're saying the system failed, they also hurt themselves by allowing Tennessee to get back in the game. But I think the thing you're saying, Trev, is you're not necessarily just saying that Auburn is being slighted. If Oklahoma were on the outside, you'd feel the same way exactly. about Oklahoma. Or right? USC. I'm just saying, right. what about Utah? We're automatically saying they shouldn't get a chance to play for the championship. How do you know? In parity in college football right now, let them determine it on the yeah. field. It's right. so that, simple. That, we're watching so the you made me drop play, my pen. I'm so upset that there's no playoffs. It's so some of the other divisions are able to settle it on the field. We'll continue to argue here, Neil. 
The Heisman Trophy presentation presented by Suzuki comes your way Saturday night, 8 o'clock Eastern time. We talked about the FedEx Orange Bowl. Probably the top four candidates for the Heisman will all be on display in the national championship game. And the Rose Bowl presented by City. Texas has a guy that they believe would be a uh, Heisman Trophy contender in Cedric Benson. Texas and Michigan, a classic matchup. Well, I think looking at the matchup just early, you got to believe that Cedric Benson not only has to be the key for uh, this Texas team, I think it comes down to the quarterback play. He's got to do more. Vincent Youngs has to do more than just running around and scrambling. He has to be able to have the ability to throw the ball downfield. Michigan's defense is too good. They're too physical. They're too well coached, especially for a month to be able to just rely on running the football. It won't get it done for Texas. And the other BCS game, the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. Pittsburgh taking on Utah. Utah bursting through. Urban Swan song there. How do you see that one, Mayday? Well, I'll tell you what. I think it's going to be a great <laughs> matchup in the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. And the reason why is because you've got two great scoring offenses. Utah behind Alex Smith, 28 touchdowns this year, only four interceptions. They average 46 points a game. But then you look at the Pittsburgh Panthers, averaging 29 points a game behind one of the hottest quarterbacks in the country, Tyler Pelko. But keep an eye on Greg Lee, the wide receiver. He's the next great wide receiver in the long line of wide receivers of Larry Fitzgerald and Antonio Bryant at the University of Pittsburgh. It's going to be a fun game to watch. Yeah. Really? Yeah. 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 Right. Why'd you look at me? Anyway, if you've been with us all season long, you might have deduced that all of us are tad competitive. Tad. That brings us to the Sonic Bowl Mania Challenge. We're going to tell you how you can get involved, compete against everybody, and pick the winners in the bowl games. That's coming up in just a little bit. Also, I want to tell you, all season long, we've been watching the great performances, the great individual performances, the Pontiac Game-Changing nominees, and these are the best plays of the season, the nominees for the Pontiac Game-Changing Performance of the Year. Missouri and Troy, offensive lineman, Junior Lassant. Look at those great hands, Mayday. Look at those knees, Junior. Get going. <laughs> you can do it, big fella. You can do it. Outrun that defense. Get him, get him, get him. He couldn't get him. Get him. Get That's Junior when you knew the Big 12 North was struggling. Lyman outrunning their DBs. <laughs> LSU and Auburn. Jason Campbell to Courtney Taylor on fourth down. This play saved their season and gave them a chance to go under defeated SEC champions. How about Ole Miss and Wyoming? Javon Bonine on a little trick ration for the fighting Joe Glenn, fighting Josh Barge, and the Pope put it to the Rebels, 37-32. That one put Wyoming over the top. And then Purdue and Notre Dame. I know it changed a little bit when Purdue got off the bus, but Jerome Brooks certainly helped a little bit, too. Great job right there, just hitting the hole, the spin move there. Find an alley down the side. Come on, Notre Dame, catch up. Where is he? 100 yards in for the touchdown, Jerome Brooks. The pick ankles chasing in there, Kirk. You know? <laughs> Wisconsin and Purdue. Kyle Orton. Oh, Purdue had such a great season running and just inches from being down. He put it on the ground. Scott Starks taking it back. And Wisconsin kept their unbeaten season alive at that point for the Starks touchdown. Down. And then Pittsburgh and Notre Dame locked up at 38 late. Tyler Palco, we've been talking about. Well, this not only went on to put uh, Pitt in a position to kick the game-winning field goal, it also turned their season around. People became aware of Pitt's program, and they were able to go on and get to the BCS. And here are the finalists, the nominees, Troy and Junior Lassant, Auburn and Jason Campbell to Courtney Taylor, Wyoming's trick play. You see the rest of the nominees, Purdue, Wisconsin, and Pittsburgh. Here's how this works. You can log on to ESPN.com, keyword Pontiac. You can vote once a week, and the winner will be announced in the FedEx Orange Bowl the Pontiac game-changing performance of the year. And the winning school gets $100,000 donated to the General Scholarship Fund, courtesy of Pontiac. Vote once a week. Everybody's sitting there just ready to click for their schools right now. Away from that, Mayday. <laughs> College Game Day Bowl Selection Special is presented by Outback Steakhouse. No rules, just right.